Thank you very much, Richard, for your kind introduction. There's a recent review about uh, different techniques to reconstruct full-size cartilage defects in the hip, including microfracturing, matrix-assisted chondrocyte transplantation, matrix-induced chondrogenesis, um, autologous cartilage implantation, the mosaic plasty as just shown by Frederick, and some other techniques. When we look what is the evidence of these techniques and what is the applicability in minimal invasive hip surgery, the evidence is decreasing from top to bottom and also the applicability. So um, I decided to keep this talk on the first three issues here, microfracturing, autologous matrix-induced chondrogenesis and uh, chondrocyte transplantation. And uh, pretty soon, um, when you look in the literature, you can realize that microfracturing, which seems to be very easy, has the disadvantage that when you open the uh, subchondral bone, blood is coming to the joint, you get a, a cartilage restoration, but it's mostly uh, um, fibrous cartilage and not hyaline cartilage, so it's not recommended for big lesions. Some authors propose to uh, fill the defect with a matrix and uh, combine this with this stimulation technique so uh, bone marrow can grow in and go into the matrix, but this has also some uh, disadvantages, so the most uh, appealing would be the matrix-assisted autologous chondrocyte transplantation where you harvest your chondrocytes from wherever you grow it in the matrix and then you bring this matrix and, as a transplant into the surface of the uh, damaged hip. And uh, according to recent uh, literature review and uh, a guideline of the German different societies, uh, which is based on a very critical uh, literature review, they say full thickness defects which are larger than 1.5 to 2 square centimeters should use matrix-assisted autologous chondrocyte transplantation, which is marked, um, and if possible, in an applicable, injectable version, because then you can use it uh, in uh, arthroscopy or minimal invasive surgery. If the lesion is smaller, then microfracturing or AMIC, uh, the matrix-induced technique, can be chosen. Of course, there are different opinions, but this is based at the moment on the current literature, and uh, I will now talk about the injectable procedure of uh, autologous chondrocyte transplantation. When you do that, you must undergo four steps. The first step is to harvest autologous cells, mostly from the uh, damaged joint. The next step is to expand the chondrocytes in culture. It must be done in uh, ex vivo, in a especially a facility, then you bring the cells into a matrix and finally you apply the matrix back to the patient to the uh, hip damage. The start is uh, the harvesting of autologous cartilage cells from the patient and there we have uh, different possibilities. We can take it as we have seen right now from healthy areas like uh, Frederick has taken his mosaic plasty from we can also take it from the chondral flap on the acetabular side uh, in cases of uh, impingement. And there are different uh, publications who have shown that the cartilage cells, the chondrocytes, in these flaps are still viable. So, for example, the Byrne group and other groups have said about 90% of the cells in these flaps, although the flap is damaged, are still living and viable. And one recent publication from the group from Hans Golwitzer has taken the cartilage from the bump area here and has investigated with different immune histochemistry and uh, PCR techniques the cartilage. And they also said when you take the cartilage from here, and this is about the, uh, the, the region we have just seen by, by Frederick, when you take the cartilage from here, you have sufficient quality but also heterogeneous quality, which depends on the type of uh, cartilage damage you have here. But it's very, very uh, important to take appropriate pellet culturing conditions. So we are going to the next step. You get your cartilage, you send it away to a company which is uh, expanding the, the, the chondrocytes, and there is uh, one publication which has uh, just recently shown 
that there is a huge variability of protocols. You must exactly know what the provider you use from uh, wants, what he needs, uh, what the cells, how they are processed in order to get a good result. Once you have expanded the cells, you must bring it back to this uh, matrix in order to up, uh, apply it to the hip. And uh, this is a very busy slide. Don't read about that. It's just to show you that we have 100 different types of matrices which can be applied, where you can see the chondrocytes on, different types of uh, materials uh, which are consisting of totally different proteins and collagens and, and whatever, a lot of things. We have uh, a special experience with one substance which is called Novocard Inject. Uh, it's a, a polymerizable in situ a gel which is consisting of albumin and hyaluronic acid and this hydrogel is very potent, biologically very potent. The cartilage cells which are seeded in that gel can produce matrix components. They can produce collagen 2 which is the typical cartilage collagen. They can produce agrican and different growth factors. And you see, we have uh, done this investigation and, and published in a very good journal where you see that collagen 2 is uh, produced, agrecanase is produced and other um, uh, enzymes which are necessary for a good cartilage growth. Finally, when you have your material, you can uh, apply it to the hip and it's uh, whatever technique you use, you should always do a good debridement. Uh, here uh, we, we did a, a, a cleaning of the subhyoidal bone. It should not bleed too much. This is a little bit too much of bleeding because when the blood is coming out, there's also a release of vascular endothelial growth factors which destroy the cartilage transplant and lead to a fibrous uh, change in it. When uh, the, the preparation is done, then we use the material which is uh, coming in a cool box one uh, glass uh, contains the chondrocytes, the other contains the matrix, the gale, and by uh, putting both together here in a syringe, we can then apply it. And the application you see here, uh, arthroscopically, the uh, gel is here injected into the defect. Uh, it is uh, critical to have a good uh, consistency of this uh, gel material. After about two minutes, you can have a very fixed and solid uh, situation here, which uh, then uh, is uh, possible to flex the hip, to move the hip, and to uh, do your rehabilitation protocol. Different articles in different studies, we have uh, investigated this material, and I just uh, show you the results of one recent investigation where we tried to uh, establish clinical results after the application, especially patient-related outcomes, and did the MRI assessment of the transplant quality. It was a limited number of patients in a control uh, a pilot study, 21 patients in three study centers in Dresden, Straubing and Essen. It was prospective, non-randomized, and patients from 18 to 60 years with a severe cartilage lease and full-size cartilage defect the labrum must be intact and the defect size should be in between 1.5 and 10 square uh, uh, centimeters. On screening, we did the uh, harvest reconstruction. You see here where we took out a cylinder with the cartilage. Uh, three weeks later, after we had the transplantation uh, time appropriate, we did the debris more and applied the graft. The uh, mean defect size was three square centimeters and uh, the number of biopsies we harvested here was four biopsies, and then we did follow-up after six, 12, and 24 months, and at that time points, we investigated the IHOT, the EQ5D, and did a MRI with the MOCART score. This is the results of the health-related quality of life score. You see a pretty good development of the EQ5D uh, in, all, in, in most patients. Uh, when you remember yesterday's discussions from different series, the best uh, score is 100, and patients normally, when they undergo surgery, are around 50 to 60. We improved the score from our patients from 52 to 85, which is a, a very good uh, improvement. Uh, very interesting is that we, when we looked at the correlations, there was a positive correlation between the pre-operative IHOT and the post-operative improvement. That means the the the. Uh, uh, better the preoperative IHOT is, the, 
the worse is the result, or the other way around, when we have preoperatively a very bad IHOT, we have a very good postoperative uh, situation, so the patients with the worst situation have the most benefit. And interesting is also with an increasing size of the defect, the results got better. So in contrast to Frederick who just said you should be, stay under two uh, square centimeters, we have made the opposite experience. The larger the defect is, the better is the result of the patient. With the MRI investigation which was performed by Professor Trutnik and uh, I hope he's here and can maybe also comment if you have any questions. The score in those uh, uh, 20 patients was very nicely, most of them uh, nearly normalized with the complete filling of the bone, with uh, integration of the border zone, intact transplant surface, and many of them have also an iso-intense MRI signal. Of course, not all of them, but a very good situation. And when you summarize the score, you have also up to 24 months of very good development. The maximum of the score is 100, but as we did know, T1 uh, degeneric uh, uh, sequences, we could only count till 85, and you see it's a very, very nice development of the MRI. In summary, um, the limitations of our study, as all in that field, are a very small patient number, a short observation time of 24 uh, months. We have recruited in through centers, which is a weakness, but also strengths because it resembles a little bit the different uh, ex, uh, experience of different centers. We have, of course, no control and no randomized design, which is a pity in such an uh, important question. But we consider this first pilot study as successful and therefore we now plan a randomized controlled study. And coming back to the question which I was asked to raise, uh, what to expect from chondro and matrix transplantation. I personally, based on our experience, uh, think that you can expect uh, good results, at least in the observation period and this uh, group of patients. Finally, I want to thank all people from our department who contributed to that experiment, the other uh, participating surgeons from the other centers, uh, Professor Trudnik, who did for all of us the MRI investigation, and uh, the guys from the company who provided the material in this investigation. And let me uh, finally take uh, the opportunity to invite you to the Congress of the European Hip Society in Lille in September and also to the EFORT Congress. In both uh, uh, Congresses, the hip will be a major issue and it would be glad to see you there again. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>